Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to uh, acknowledge the youth. Thank you for being here and supporting the appeal and everybody else around here. Um, for me, Peel River watershed is very important uh, for myself and for NWT people who live down Fort McPherson, uh, Chickachick, and Anubik, and all that area where Peel River watershed runs through. And uh, I want to see the water kept clean, obtaining to the fish and the people below. If it wasn't for water, all of us won't be here right now. We won't be standing here talking to each other. We won't be here talking about pure water. That's one of the last places that I know of that has pure, clear water that you can keep your cups and drink from it. And um, I doubt it if you can do that down here in the Yukon River. But anyways, I've been out uh, Peel River watershed since I was 13 years old, back in 1958. Started guiding for an outfitter named uh, Louis Brown. And uh, he had all the uh, native guides out there who knew the country. And the guides I worked for Louis Brown taught me that area. They never used a map, and they taught me, if I'm going somewhere, I always look behind you, look at your background, your back uh, landscape, and look ahead, you know where you're going, and you know when you're coming back, you see your landscape, and then you come back through there. I learned that from them. I hardly ever used a map going out there. I don't know if Chris Whitrick's here, but uh, I like to acknowledge him. Alan Young and uh, Chris McKinnon, you know, they're all outfitters out there and they, they really are pushing for for protection of the uh, River watershed. Mining exploration, mining company ever get out there, it's going to be one big mess if they ever pollute. The Pure River watershed, which what I'm talking about is the water. Once that gets polluted, then all the vegetation around that area is going to be polluted also, which would affect our animals, the birds, gophers, crows, chickens, you name it, even the eagles. It's something that our ancestors had been out there. I know because I was told a lot of story about our ancestors being out there using stone axe to cut stumps or wood, and there's proof of that out there. And um, there's grave sites, high cash. I've taken some photos of this area, and uh, all the trails that being used out there by horses, it's all on our native ancestor traditional foot trail. Which brings me back to where I've always talked about some elders told me that when the white people came up here, no offense, but when the white people came up here, when they started building the highway, they used native guides to guide them through Canada to put in the highway, and I believe that very much. If it wasn't for Native people, I guess, you know, whiters won't be here, Dawson, but you know, that's, that's all our traditional territory. And a lot of times the government don't realize that. They don't realize, too, when, when you start building a, a town, you uh, 
destroy the habitat of the animals. A lot of people say, why do the animals come back into town? I'll tell you why, because they were born here. They know. They know, and you know it, and I know it. And the government knows it. So, I'd like to say thank you to our youth, the youth out here, our elders, especially people from Fort McPherson, Kitty Chick, and uh, Inuvik, and Old Crow, and Dawson, and Nocturne Yakan. I'd like to thank them for giving a lot of support. And um, anytime you go out there, you get a chance, jump on it, go out there, and enjoy the life of beauty that's out there where you can drink pure, clear, clean water, which you will never, ever forget in your life. Thank you.